Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for Tallinn Avesi's webinar to introduce the performance of the second quarter of 2015. Today's webinar is hosted by the Chairman of the Board, Karl Heino Brooks, and Chief Financial Officer, Rina Gai. After the presentation, you can ask questions by writing them on a panel on the right corner. It's called chat box. Also, if you face any technical problems, please don't hesitate to let us know by writing them into the same chat box. We will now start with the presentation, for which I will hand over to turn to Karl Brooks. Thank you, Marilis. Good, good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining the Q2 2015 webinar. Okay. Uh, our key challenge remains resolving the ongoing tariff dispute and also repairing the Tihaza collector, which is located in Primi Beach area of Tallinn. Um, as you will see from the operational financial results, the underlying performance of the business continues to be very strong and we provide an excellent service to our customers in Tallinn and some of the surrounding municipalities. This is further reinforced by our key performance indicators and our continued compliance with the services contract which dictates strict performance criteria. I will now provide a reminder of some of the background to the tariff dispute and also an update on recent developments. AS Tallinn of Asia has been in court in, been in a court dispute with the Competition Authority since 2011. The dispute arose because the Competition Authority has to date refused to approve the annual water tariff application submitted by the company, which is contrary to the terms of the original services agreement that was signed back in 2001 when the company was first privatised. In 2012, the Estonian courts deemed the tariffs part of the service agreement to be an administrative contract and therefore deserves the full protection of the Estonian legal system. The submitted tariff applications are fully in accordance with the privatisation contract, partially sponsored by the European Bank of Reconstruction and Development, the EBRD, and approved by the Government of the Republic of Estonia back in 2000. There are a number of legal routes being followed by the company, and I'll give you an update on each of those now. So first of all, the, the local court case. During 2015, we had three local court hearings, with the final one occurring on the 18th of February. On the 5th of June, the Tallinn Administrative Court made their decision and dismissed the claim made by ASTV. The company have already issued an intention to appeal, but were unable to prepare the full appeal until we've received the detailed explanation behind the judge's decision. And as of today, I can confirm that we have still not received the explanation that goes with the judge's decision. Until the final verdict, of the tariff dispute, the preliminary legal protection applied by the Estonian courts remains in force, which effectively means that tariffs are going to continue to re remain frozen at the 2010 levels. So to avoid the expiry of the damages claim, in May 2014, Tarnavesi also submitted a claim against the Competition Authority for compensation for potential damages of over 90 million euros for the losses over the lifetime of the international privatisation contract up until 2020. This claim for damages was previously suspended by the courts until the final verdict has been reached. Now, moving on to international arbitration. Um, after three years of trying to negotiate a solution, the Supervisory Council of Tallinn of Asia decided to commence international arbitration proceedings against Republic of Estonia for breach of the bilateral investment treaty between the Netherlands and the Republic of Estonia. It has been claimed that the Republic of Estonia has breached the fair and equitable treatment requirement by the changes to the law and the activities of the public authorities which have deprived AS Talnivesi from tariffs approved according to the service agreement concluded as part of the privatisation. On the 17th of June 2015, the timetable of the international arbitration proceedings was determined, with the final hearing now set for the end of, well, for the first two weeks of November 2016. The process remains on ongoing, and we have no further updates for the webinar, but of course we will update the uh, Talon of Asia website should those materialise in the future. For more details on the case, um, if you look at the ICSID website, you will see the history of the case to date, and a link to that site can be found on our on the uh, Talnavesi Investors section of our website, 
and it is linked to the 22nd of June announcement. So, finally, Talon Bays and its shareholders are committed to ensure that the company's returns are reasonable and in accordance with European norms. Since 2001, the real rate of return made from the privatisation is 6.2%, which is comparable with the returns permitted by regulated water companies in both the UK and the Netherlands. As stated on numerous occasions previously, the company remains open to further discussions related to a negotiated settlement. I'll now give you a short overview of the operational highlights for Q2 2015 and also an update on the repair of the collector at Strumi. Okay, so despite the ongoing tariff dispute, our first priority is to provide our customers with a high quality and reliable drinking water supply and an environmentally compliant wastewater discharge service from our wastewater treatment works at Palusair. Q2 2015 has been, an ex been excellent in terms of operational network performance and the service given to cons consumers. The quality of the water supply to our customers remains very high, with 99.93% compliance being achieved against the stipulated standards based on the 1,473 samples taken in the first six months of 2015. The leakage rate in Q, uh, uh, for Q2 ended at 13.95% against the annual target of 17%, which is the lowest ever in the company's history and represents best-in-class performance when compared to other European countries. The final effluent leaving the company's treatment plant at Palisair has complied fully with all legal requirements and pollution tax coefficient of 0.5 has therefore been achieved. Now, moving on to the Tihaza collector. In October last year, we observed subsidence in the Strumi Beach area, which indicated damage to our asset, which is located some 10 meters below the ground in this area. The repair of this collector is technically challenging, given its depth and also the local geology. To date, there have been no disruption to consumers and no environmental pollution incidents. On the 29th of April this year, the company signed a contract with Finnish construction company Lemminkainen for the construction works to be performed on the Tihaza collector. The investment for the collector construction has been included in the 2000 investment plan with an estimated value currently between 6 and 7 million. Repair works are ongoing and are on schedule for completion towards the end of this year. We do have contingency plans in place as well to mitigate any, against any disruption to our consumers and any pollution incidents while the work is being done. Just a reminder also that United Utilities, who are, are our major shareholder, are also providing continuous technical support through the, chat, through the repair phase of this collector. That concludes the operational updates and also an update on the tariff dispute. I'm now going to hand you over to Rena, who will take you into a lot more detail regarding the financials for Q2. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, and good morning to everyone. Now I would like to give you the overview of the financial performance of Octodes Tallinavesi in the second quarter of 2015. I will start with the financial highlights and then we'll give more detailed overview about sales and costs. The general performance of the company has been good. The sales revenue were 2.8% or 0.4 million euros higher than in the second quarter of 2014. Most of the increase has come from the sales revenues from water and wastewater services, which have increased by 2.1% or 0.3 million euros. Gross profit for the second quarter has been up by 3.6%, being 0.3 million euros higher than in the second quarter of last year. The increase is mainly impacted by lower pollution tax, as in for the second quarter of 2015, as we had... Um, <clears throat> problems with lower heavy metals concentration requirements in the first two quarters in 2014. The operating profit has been relatively stable, being slightly higher by 0.6% than in the second quarter of 2014. Apart from the pollution tax impact mentioned earlier on, our operating costs and related operating profit continues to be impacted by consultation and legal fees, derived from the ongoing tariff dispute. Net profit for the second quarter in 2015 has been by 178.5% or 1.4 million euros higher than in 
2014. Financial revenues and expenses have been highly affected by the impact of the change in fair value of swap contracts. Eliminating the impact of the fair value change of swap contracts and pollution tax impact, the net profit would have been relatively stable, being 0.02 million euros lower than in the second quarter in 2014. Now let's move on to the next slides and I will comment on the changes of revenues and expenses a bit closer. Let's start from the sales. As mentioned before, the total sales revenue for the second quarter have increased by 2.8% to 0.4 million euros. Total revenues from modern wastewater services were by 2.1% or 0.26 million euros higher than in 2014 amounting to 12.39 million euros. We are still operating with the frozen tariffs since 2010 and the increase in revenues is slowly driven by the consumption. In 2015 second quarter, we can see a slight increase in inside and outside area water and wastewater revenues. The domestic clients consumption has increased by 1.4% or 95,000 cubic meters to 7.03 million cubic meters. Apartment block segment gives the biggest share of our revenues in domestic sector, contributing 68% of the increase in volumes in domestic customers' revenues. In the second quarter, the sales to commercial customers has increased by 2% or 48,000 cubic meters to 2.43 million cubic meters. Main contribution comes from the industrial and other commercial customer segments. Total volumes from outside areas have increased by 11.2% or 163,000 cubic meters. The increase is related higher water and also higher rainfall volumes from outside the area compared to 2014 comparative period. This now takes us to the overview of costs. The company's underlying performance, as mentioned before, in the second quarter has been good. The total operating costs in the second quarter of 2015 have increased compared to 2014, same period by 2.9% or 0.2 million euros. The biggest impact on direct production costs come from 0.32 million euros lower pollution tax costs, related to 400 times lower concentration requirements for heavy metals in the first and second quarter in 2014. The problem is elim eliminated with the current water permit that is valid till March 2018. Other direct production costs have remained relatively stable compared to the second quarter in 2014, being impacted from combination of changes in prices and movements in treatment volumes. Staff costs have increased due to a higher headcount in order to provide more efficient and broader range of in-source services and also a slight increase in salaries. Other costs of goods sold have increased by 17.2% or 0.22 million euros, which is mostly related to the timing and maintenance and repair works of assets. 7.3% or 0.12 million increase in administration expenses is mostly affected by the increased legal and consultation costs related to the tariff dispute. The company has ongoing tariff dispute locally and internationally, and the legal costs are expected to continue to be at a light, high level. Net financial expenses have mostly been affected by the non-monetary revaluation of the fair value of the swap contracts, having the positive net income of 0.4 million euros. If we would now move on to the cash flows. The cash position as of 30th of June 2015 is still strong. The company's cash balance stood at 33 million euros, forming 16.5% of the total assets. Compared to the second quarter of 2014, the cash balance has, has increased by 6.5 million euros. The biggest contribu contribution to the cash flows comes from the main operations. The company's average receivables collectability rate in 2015 has been very high, being 99.75% on average. In the sixth month of 2015, net cash flows from investing activities resulted a cash outflow of 2.07 million euros. The money paid for fixed assets has been showing an increase of 30% or 1.1 million euros compared to the comparative period in 2014. And the compensation received from the pipelines amounted to 2.6 million euros in 2015, which is a decrease of 4.3 million euros compared to the last year's same period. Majority of the amount collected for the pipeline is related to the collections uh, for the network extension program in last year, the collection of which ended in March 2015. 
Financing cash flows are affected by mostly by dividend payments that was made on 19th of June in the amount of 18, 18 million euros. Dividend payment in 2015 was equal to the dividend payment in 2014. I would like to thank you for your time now and uh, all your questions are really welcome. Uh, you can ask uh, the questions uh, by writing them into the chat, uh, chat box in the right corner. We'll give you some time to type. Yes, first question. I understand that you plan on appealing the Tallinn Administrative Court's ruling made on the 5th of June. Have you given any thought to how it would influence Tallinn Avesi's financial results if you were to lose the case on higher court levels? Okay, um, I'll, I'll answer that one. Yes, it, it's definitely the company's intention to, to appeal the local court ruling. Um, as I mentioned previously, we can't prepare that appeal or the contents of that appeal till we understand the reason behind the judge's decision that's already been made. Um, I can't really predict the outcome on the company's financials um, should we end up going as far as Supreme Court, so I think it's probably not, uh, not appropriate for me to comment on that at this stage. Thank you, Con. Are there any more questions? Another question, what is your prognosis on the level of water consumption in the new, near future? Will it change or stay the same? Considering the past and current consumption that we've seen so far, we don't expect the very uh, quick increase in the consumption. It has been quite stable over the years and we expect it to be stable going forward. There probably might be slight increase and or decreases uh, being seen in the future in different customer groups, but all in all, it's expected to be generally stable. Thank you. Well, we will give some time for another question. Another one. Do you have any plans to branch out the, uh, or expand uh, in the foreseeable uh, future? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll pick that one up again. Um, at, the, at the moment, our, our key focus, as we've mentioned, is to continue to perform for the customers of Tallinn and to resolve the ongoing tariff dispute and also to, to repair the collector at Strumi. So growth into perhaps over the municipalities is not a key priority for the company at the moment and it is made problematic as well by the current regulatory environment which we're, we're operating in. Thank you. Any more questions? Another question. Does the competition authority argue that the current management uh, agreement between Tallinn City and Tallinn Novesi seriously harms the public interest? If it is so, what are their arguments uh, not to pay damage compensation? Of course, it is the next court case after tariff dispute, as I understand. So, <laughs> currently we can't uh, too much comment about the ongoing uh, court case and uh, the arguments that are put forward uh, in the courtroom as it's being uh, partly closed. We are still in the court and uh, uh, we are currently, as uh, the first court decision was ruled as our services agreement between Daily Navesi and City of Tallinn was um, declared to be a public law contract. Now the main argument is about whether it is uh, binding uh, to your competition authority or not. So going forward we will let you know more developments as, as regards to the court case when uh, this information will be available.
Thank you. We will be expecting more questions if there is any. As we are expecting questions, uh, I remind you that the presentation and the link to the webinar uh, recording will be sent to, uh, to you all later this day and will be available on our web page as well. As it seems, there are no more questions, but if you have any, please don't says, hesitate to send them through via email, for example, or call. Um, I thank you on behalf of Tani Namesi. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today and uh, we are looking forward to share our results and news with you in the future. Thank you so much. Have a pleasant day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.